one of the cars from this era though became and remains beloved around the world. The Audi Quattro. It was the first rally car to use four-wheel drive competitively, and at one point it was rumoured to have over 600 brake horsepower, which is almost twice as much as today's world rally cars. This was a real beast of a car. It was like uh, being hit by a 20-ton truck from behind when you left the line. Uh, the car just rocketed away compared with uh, all the other cars. Uh, the power kept coming, the brakes, the handling, everything was just so much of a step up from everything else. Uh, he does a lot of horsepower and uh, also was uh, very wide with big uh, aerodynamic uh, things, so it was probably the most impressive car. From a children on, I, I see that car, I hear the noise, and uh, it's still in my mind the noise from the old days. It changed the shape of rallying. Uh, it brought in four-wheel drive, turbocharging, tremendous performance. Uh, everything else was obsolete overnight. The Audi Quattro was such an incredible and dramatic step forward that other manufacturers could only choke in its dust. During 1982, I was contracted to Ford uh, to do a number of rallies with Malcolm Wilson and uh, also some development on the RS 1700T. And then I got a call from Audi to say, would I like to do the Welsh rally with Bjorn Valdegard? Uh, Ford and Malcolm weren't doing that rally. Uh, I rang up Peter, Peter Ashcroft, the team manager at Ford then, and he said yes. And so did the Welsh rally with Bjorn Valdegard, uh, which we won. And uh, went down to see Peter Ashcroft, and uh, he said, well, tell me, what, what's it like? I said, frankly, Peter, I think you, you need to uh, stop the 1700T because it's a long way behind the, the, the Quattro. With drivers such as Walter Roll and Michelle Mouton rallies only female winner, the Quattro gave Audi the drivers and manufacturers championships in 1983 with Hanu Mikola. And the drivers championship in 84 with Stig Longfist. But like all the Group B cars, it was too hot to handle. It was one of the most difficult cars that I've ever had to drive, but on the other hand, you derived great, fantastic, great satisfaction from being able to, to master it. It was a, you know, it was a very agricultural four-wheel drive system, which made it very difficult to drive, but uh, and with a big turbocharger on there, so you had lots of lag and you had no fancy differentials now like you have to make it easy. But uh, I have to say, once you you, you managed to, to master it, then again, it was, a, it was just a great, uh, great fun and great satisfaction. The Audi were never a good car. At that, day, at that time, they came and they were successful because of the four-wheel drive car. But from the point other manufacturers come with four-wheel drive, Audi was lost and, and never win any top result anymore. And uh, so it was not a fantastic car. The engine was too much in front, everything was too heavy. But the history and, and, and the magic of that car was incredible. The legacy the Audi Quattro left was all too apparent. After its introduction, no two-wheel drive car ever won the manufacturer's championship again. Catch all the spectacular action live. Get WRC Plus and watch every live stage as it happens.